Okay, so today we're going to show you how to interpolate between different values, different drop values we'll start out with, and we can also interpolate between different temperature values too, the adjustments for the drop there. Now where this comes in handy is if you guys are using these ballistic tables and you need to find a number in between a set of numbers and you want to get as close as possible, you're going to have to do what they call interpolation. Okay, So let's say we have a target that comes up at a range uh, in between, let's say, 900 and 1,000 meters. Let's say the target is up at 934 meters. Okay, So that's our range to the target. Okay, 934 meters. And we'll just say for now, we'll keep it an even number. It's at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so if we look at our uh, hasty ballistic tables that we developed here uh, on the last video or a video before that on the 243 Winchester, okay, uh, we can simply look at the chart and we can say, okay, we have the drop data for 900 at 40 degrees and we have the drop data for 1,000, but we don't have it for 934. So how do we find that value? That's the tricky part, right? Well, if uh, you want to do this in your brain, you can usually get pretty close if you're pretty sharp. Uh, you can just interpolate on the fly and you'll get pretty close. But if you want a more exact value, you probably want to do it mathematically. So I'll just show you guys how to do that in case you've uh, never done it before. Um, so basically, what we're going to do is we need to find the data for the number below uh, 934, the closest number below that, and then the closest number above that, the drop data for that. And then we'll use that drop data to figure out what it should be for in between there. Okay, So let's say at 900 meters we have the data, and at 900 it's going to be 29.5 minutes of angle. Okay, That's according to our, our tables up here. Okay, All right, and let's say our number above it, the next reference point we have is at 1,000 meters, and at 1,000 we have drop of 36.2 minutes of angle. Okay, so if we want 934 data, okay, we don't have it, but we can interpolate between these two to figure out what it's going to be. And like I said, you can do it in your mind to get pretty close, but uh, and just by thinking about it. 934 uh, meter drop data is going to be a little bit closer to this value than, than it will be to this because 34 is closer to 900 than it is to a uh, 1,000, right? Or uh, 934. So what we're going to do is mathematically interpolate. And uh, how we're going to do this is going to be, uh, now you got to keep in mind this is a linear process. A ballistic uh, curve is uh, not linear. It's a parabolic arc. Right, so it's uh, not a straight line. So interpolation is not perfect, uh, but it will get you very, very close. And if uh, the closer the increments you have together, the closer uh, your interpolation will be, because it's less uh, of an adjustment from the linear interpolation than it is to the actual curvature of the ballistic curve. If you know what I'm saying, okay? So, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and interpolate this here. So, all right, we have the data for 1,000 and the data for 900. How do we find uh, the data for 934? Well, simply put, what we're going to do is we're going to find the difference between uh, this and this. That means subtracting. We're going to find the difference between these two numbers, and we're going to multiply that by 34%. We're going to take 34% of this um, difference. Now, why do we say 34%? Okay, we have 934 meters. So 30, 34, uh, you know, added to 900 is 34% on its way to 1,000, right? So we have the, uh, this. So 34% of the way past this to 1,000 is going to give us uh, the correct uh, drop data, at least in a linear interpolation form. So let's go ahead and figure that out. So let's uh, figure out the difference first of all. So we'll subtract here, we'll uh, subtract these two, and that's going to be, oh mercy, that's going to be seven, uh, 6.7 minutes, if I'm not crazy, okay? And you can double check me if I'm, yeah, yeah, that's right. 6.7 minutes is the difference between this and this, okay? So now we simply take 34% of this 6.7, of means uh, multiplying, right? So times 34%, and you, you probably use a calculator out in the field, right? And 34% uh, of that is going to be... Something like that, 
Okay, so 2.278 of this. Okay, is that's okay? So does that make sense? Well, let's look at our, our thing here. 934 meters. 34 percent of this should be about like that. So you just want to take a glance at your numbers, make sure they make sense. If you get a crazy number that doesn't seem like 34 percent of that number, then you did something crate uh, crooked, right? Okay, so now that we have this value, all we have to do is simply add this to the 900 meters, okay? And that'll give us 900. Uh, this is the, the drop for 900, and this is the drop for the uh, 34 uh, uh, meters past that, okay? So we're simply going to add that together. So let's uh, basically add 29.5, and that's going to come out to be 31.7, something like that, okay? So that's our final elevation setting there. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and make sure this makes sense. So our drop data at 900 was 29.5 and at 1000 it was 36.2. Okay, this is between those numbers so we're kind of on the right track and it's closer to this one than it is to this and that makes sense because it's 934, it's not like 984, right? Okay, so that looks right. So that's how we interpolated to get uh, our drop data between those two numbers. So that's an example of uh, interpolation used to de uh, determine values for different uh, range increments, okay? So this is what you would do if you had a hasty a ballistic table and you had a value somewhere between two of, the, two of the drop values you were given on the paper and you wanted to find out exactly how to do it. You simply find the difference, multiply that difference by uh, how much percent in between the numbers you are, uh, it's always going to be just these last two numbers on the range, and uh, that so 0.34%, and then you add that to the lower number, and that will give you your drop value. It's linear, but it, it's pretty close, okay? Let's try one of these for a temperature difference, okay? Let's say we have a temperature that's in between two of our given values, and on our hasty charts, we'll notice that our temperatures are in 10 degree increments. We don't have a separate column for 51 degrees, 52 degrees, 53 degrees, that would get crazy, right? Uh, so in order to save space, we uh, you know sacrificed a little bit uh, and just went ahead and did 10 uh, degree increments. Well, if you want to find an exact value between those two, you can interpolate that way as well. So let's uh, do another example here for you just to give you some more practice. Uh, let's say we're at 800 meters, okay? And let's say you want to find the drop data at 800 meters for like something in between two of those uh, numbers. Let's say like 88 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So at 88 degrees Fahrenheit, we have the drop data for 80 degrees below it, and the closest one above it is 90, okay? So at 800 meters, our drop for, let's say, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, it, according to the table here, we're just reading it right off the table, is 21.2 minutes of angle, okay? And uh, the one above it at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, let's take a look at the table there. Our drop is only 20.4, okay? Now, when you're getting hotter, uh, the air is thinner, and also your, uh, your muzzle velocity is going up a little bit because uh, of ammo temperature. So you got, uh, it's going to be a negative number as you get hotter, okay? So let's go ahead and subtract these and find out the difference. And uh, the difference is going to be... Uh, it's going to be... You're going to come down... 0.8 meters, so um, I'm, I'm sorry, 0.8 minutes of angle, okay? So that's the difference between these is a negative 0.8, okay? So now we're going to just simply take this difference here, and we're going to multiply that by the percentage uh, that we are in between this and this. So how much percent are we between 80 degrees and 90 degrees, right? Well, if we're trying to figure out 88 degrees, that's 80% of the way from 80 degrees to 90 degrees, right? So we're going to take this times uh, 80%, which is 0 0.80. I know it's a little confusing all these 0.8s in here, but we simply took uh, the percentage of this times the difference of that, right? So let's see what's that going to come out to be. Uh, it's going to be like uh, 6. Okay. So that's going to be... Okay. So this is how much we're going to drop our uh, elevation. So... Um, the difference between those was uh, this number here, and we simply took that number times the percentage, which was 80%, because 88 degrees.
So we're going to take that and we're going to subtract this number because it's going to be an adjustment downwards. We're going to subtract that from our uh, 80 degree Fahrenheit elevation setting, okay? So our 80 degree Fahrenheit setting was, uh, what, 21.2 and uh, we're going to come down 0.64. So that's going to be like a total elevation of 20.56 minutes. So this is our adjustment that we do for the elevation corrected for uh, 88 degrees. Now let's make sure this makes sense again, right? If our value is 21.2 at 80 and uh, 20.4 at 90, uh, 88 degrees is going to be, be in between these two numbers, but it's going to be closer to 90 in this case because we're closer to 90, right? 88 degrees is closer to 90 than it is to 80. And does this number make sense then? Yes, it does. We're at 20.56. It's closer to 90 than it is to 80. So there we go. That's our elevation setting. So that wasn't too bad. Let's try one more. Okay, so let's do one that's a little more tricky this time. Let's say we have something that has a range of like a 1257, okay? So we're pretty far out there and we have a temperature that also falls in between some of our known data points, 84 degrees. So both the range and the temperature in this case fall in between known data points. We're gonna to have to interpolate for both of these. So how do we accomplish that? Now it starts to get a little more complicated when you have multiple things to interpolate. However, it is possible to get a pretty uh, good interpolation here. Uh, we just have to kind of chunk it up into pieces. So first we're going to start off with the range. We're going to figure out the, uh, the additional elevation beyond 1200 meters for, uh, that the 57 meters uh, would have. Okay, And then we're going to figure out the temperature. So let's start off here and uh, we know the the drop data for 1200 meters and we know it for 1300 meters correct okay so we're just going to look at our ballistic tables and uh, see that for 1200 meters our drop data is telling us 45.7 you can see that on the table up there and uh, at 1300 meters our drop data is 54 even okay so that's our uh that's our two different drop data for those uh, different range increments. Now what we need to do is find for uh, 57 meters beyond 1200. So that would simply be, we're gonna find out the difference here. And the difference would be 8.3-ish, okay? We're gonna take that times 57% because we're 57% of the way to 1300 meters from 1200, right? Like we kind of explained before. Okay, so that's going to give us like 4.7-ish minutes, okay? And um, we're going to uh, simply take this. This is the additional drop for the 57 meters beyond 1,200. So we're just going to add that to the 1,200 meter drop, which was 45.7 like we had on our table. So we're going to add that on there, okay? And that's going to give us 50.431 minutes okay and this is figured out for 80 degrees Fahrenheit okay so these were at 80 degrees um, now we're gonna figure out the temperature correction okay so let's use a different color here so we can kind of visually keep track of this a little better okay so we're gonna figure out the temperature portion now now if we look up at our chart we need to figure out uh, the temperature difference uh, at 1,200 meters between 80 and 90 degrees, okay, and at 12, uh, I'm sorry, and at 1,300 meters between 80 and 90 degrees. So let's break this up into two big chunks here. Let's go 1,200 meters and 1,300 meters, okay. And, uh, okay, so this is all at, uh, here we have 90 degrees and 80 degrees. We're going to figure it out for both of them. At 90 degrees, our chart tells us the drop is 47 point, or, I'm 43.7. At 80 degrees, what's our chart telling us? 45.7, okay. All right, uh, let's do the same thing over here real quick. So at 90 degrees, at 1300 meters, we have a drop of 51.5, and at 80 degrees, our drop is 54. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, interpolate between both of these for the temperature, okay? So first thing we gotta do is uh, subtract, and this is gonna be two, 
Okay, and now uh, we're going to subtract here. This is going to be 2.5. Okay, now being that we're in the temperature uh, category, we can look up here to find out our multiplier. In this case, uh, 84 degrees, that's going to be 40% past 80 degrees on its way to 90, right? Because 4. So 40% uh, will be the multiplier. So times 40 is going to give us uh, 0.8. Okay, 0 0.8. And this one is going to be the same times 40 is going to give us 1. Okay, so these numbers here are the temperature corrections for 1200 meters and for 1300 meters for 84 degrees. Okay, now uh, what we simply have to do is uh, figure out these in relation to uh, the 1257. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put these two numbers together here. And we're going to go ahead and subtract those. And that's going to give us 0.2. Okay. Now we're going to ta uh, simply take this number and uh, we're going to take this and figure out for 57%. Because that was our range up here. And uh, that's going to yield, what is that going to be? 57% like 0.114. Okay. And um, now what we're going to do is we're going to take that number and simply add it on to this number here. So we're going to add this to this. Okay. So that's going to be like, uh, well, let's just put it in here. Okay. It's going to be 0.9. Four. Okay, so that's the number. That's our uh, actual temperature correction for 84 degrees at 1,257 meters. Okay, that's our temperature correction for those conditions. So we can take that and we can uh, correct this original drop, uh, 50.431, and being that it's warmer conditions, right? Uh, we can subtract because warmer conditions means that we're going to have hotter ammo temperature, hence higher velocity, and we're also going to have uh, less atmospheric density as the air warms up the molecules are moving faster so the uh, given uh, unit of air is going to expand. Okay, So we're going to subtract that from our original firing solution and in the field you're going to be using a calculator like this here. Okay. So let's uh, figure this out. And uh, 50.431 minus .0. Okay. So 49.517. All right. So that's going to be our final elevation. And if you look at your ballistic table, it's going to make sense, right? Uh, 49 is kind of in between, if you look at the four highlighted numbers there, we got, uh, you know, the at 1,200 we got 45 and 43, and at 1,300 we got 54 and 51, so you got to kind of imagine, must stretch your mind, uh, the number is going to be kind of in the middle of those four, right? And so 49.5 does logically make sense, uh, just thinking about it. And uh, you should be able to actually look at this and be able to kind of tell what's going on as well. Um, so you can do this in your mind and in a, uh, a situation that would dictate you'd have less time to make a shot, you would just obviously take a glance at your charts and do a mental interpolation real quick. But in a lot of situations, uh, a sniper, a spotter team is going to be, you know, they're going to be setting up range cards, they're going to be figuring out the exact ranges to all the different target reference points, and they're going to be uh, figuring out all these uh, firing solutions ahead of time in anticipation of uh, what temperature ranges they'll probably be operating in at the time the target's going to present itself. So something like this is actually not that far out. The complications actually get, or I'm sorry, the calculations actually get a little more complicated than this in the field. But this is just uh, how to interpolate. Uh, and also you can see here, um, given it's not really that complex when you back up and look at it and after you get used to it, it seems a little confusing at first, but after you look at this, 
um, and go through it a few times under pressure in the field. Um, this could be a bad deal, right? So that's one of the reasons why I kind of like using the 10 meter increments is because it kind of cuts out a lot of these interpolations here. Uh, it'll uh, give you a lot closer increments to work with so you can glance at the charts and uh, you know we could just glance at the 1260 uh, meter data and uh, just basically do a mental interpolation and we'd be in such close increments that it'd be so close that it would pretty much uh, be right on and we could do that even mentally for the 84 degrees as well or you could just uh, narrow it down to the one simple temperature interpolation when you have to do double interpolations it gets a little goofy and uh, so it's nice to keep it simple if you can so that's the reason why uh, we have the 10 meter increment charts that's what I was talking about when we did those okay so now that you understand interpolations this is definitely something you're gonna wanna practice a lot of times um, shooting is actually pretty easy once you learn how to do it but this kind of stuff um, this kind of stuff can be a little tricky just getting used to how to think you need to practice this stuff just as much or more than you actually do shooting the rifle in the field because if you don't have everything dialed in correctly you can be the best uh, shot in the world in practicing perfect marksmanship skills and you're going to miss by a lot because you didn't have this stuff figured out ahead of time. So if you can get, and this will seriously cut down the time it takes to make a shot if you know what you're doing on these deals. And if you understand the concepts, again, you can just glance at your charts and your tables and make pretty good mental interpolations. So the more you work with this and the more you play with it and the more you uh, tinker with the numbers, the more it becomes kind of second nature. And after a while, you'll just be able to kind of take a glance at the numbers on your chart and you'll be able to make a mental interpolation like in a second. And you'll get really close after you get used to it. But uh, it's very, very important to learn how to do it mathematically. All right, next couple videos are gonna be on some of the different topics and advanced external ballistics. So stay tuned for those. All right, let's get out of here.